Impact, a man from the mist. For those of you new, my name's Barry. Left hand drive, final drive casing, has been uh, cleaned using electrolysis. I'll take you through the process in a couple of minutes. Um, it's also had a wire brush around it. And we knew there was three broken studs in it. Yesterday I found another one, I'll show you it. Been a right butcher on with this one, but I'll show you this broken stud. Um, I've had to order a 13 millimeter slot drill and a helicoil kit because the top of the thread's broken. <clears throat> and what's left of the stud in the bottom might come out, but I'm going to have to helicoil the hole. But not to worry. It'll get sorted. But, have you ever, have you ever heard of Deja Vu? Aye, somebody's left us an easy out in one of the stabilizer bracket bolts in here. We'll show you it, huh? Right, let's go through the process. So, I've got this half a plastic barrel. Got my casting sitting in the bottom of it. You see down here, I've got a couple of tuba ones or tuba threes or whatever they are. It's uh, keeping the casting off the floor. I've got it wired up. I've got my sacrificial cathode here that we're going to wire up into this end of the bath. And then we're going to apply a bit of power to it. So, let's have a look. Oh, wait a minute, I forgot to tell you. I put the casting in this way up because of the holes. This way we fill this and these holes will fill with water and clean. The other way up, all those holes would stay full of air and we couldn't get it cleaned. But anyway, right, let's have a look at our little electrolysis unit. Huh? So we've got here power pack off a computer. Positive and negative leads. And we're just going to plug it in. We're going to plug it in with a little extension there. We're going to cover that tub up with a sheet of plastic. Put a weight on it. Because I think Deb has just told me when for gale force winds tonight. And I want to cover that so that the birds aren't tempted to land in it. To think they can either get a drink or they can get a bath in it. Having said that, once that starts, the whole top of that will just become big safe scum so what we're going to do with this now we're going to get some buckets of hot water we're going to put in a cup of soap powder and apparently that's not because it gets it nice and clean it's because it increases the conductivity of the water from the positive to the negative it's worked for me in the past I've done the manifold and I've done what else I had something else that I cannot remember at the minute. Um, I've had something else that we've done with electrolysis and it came up really, really good. Um, so we'll get this set away. We're going to give it 24, 36 hours and have a look at it. And then we'll decide whether it needs more. Let's get on. Let's get it activated. Eh? We've got a positive lead to our sacrificial anode. We have the negative lead to the cathode, which is the casting inside. I've got it wired up, switched on. What we see here, little bubbles starting to come through. Um, what we see here, some rust starting to transfer. Now, one thing I didn't tell you is, when you do this process, do it outside or in a really, really well ventilated space. You don't want to be doing this indoors. The gas that's produced when this is cleaning is hydrogen. Perfect at ventilating your house because it just blows the roof straight off. So, don't forget, well ventilated room. Don't go around with naked lights and sparks trying to find out what's going on. Right, back in a couple of days, See what it looks like, yeah? Eight o'clock the following morning. And we've got what looks like an enormous bowl of tomato soup. Looking brilliant. You can see here. 
bubbling away merrily. It's maybe not as vigorous as I would have hoped it was going to be. But there again, it is a tiny power pack. But we're going to let it continue for another 24 hours before we do anything about it. Oops. There's Daddy Blackbird. Here in his territory. Right, so we've got a set of forged um, bear and pullers with very thin tools. Let's have a quick look at them. So these are little bear and pullers. I think they're six inches, which is supposed to mean six inches from here to the toe. But you see, we've got a very thin toe which allowed us to get underneath that the lip on that bearing on the inner bearings in that casting and allowed us to pull them out now the first bearing was a little bit tight not very tight but a little bit tight you knew you were pulling it the second bearing was so slack that I had actually put my finger on the rim when I was turning the spanner make sure that it was coming out and that the, the legs hadn't popped out from underneath that's how free it was listen to daddy there he's having himself a right good sing song this morning isn't he let's have a now then daddy i don't know whether he responds to noises or whether he is actually talking back to it but listen to him he sits there all day. He's getting more and more friendly. He's coming down into the, the garden and he's helped himself with a few worms. But, uh, oh, the water bowl's empty. Looks like they've been having a bath. We'll get that sorted out in a minute. Right, two days into our electrolysis. Let's have a look. As you can see, we've still got the tomato soup going on. A lovely big clump of rust sitting up there though see here now the rings start to form here where the bolt and flange is for the final drive system to the axle so I'm going to give that this afternoon I might pull it out this afternoon have a look at it see what needs to be done see if, we can see if it's finished or see if it needs some more this afternoon after we've moved some sheep right 36 hours in the bath and we've got flash rusting because I've just given it a wash down with fresh clean water out of the hose to get rid of the scum off it. Um, but in here, all the surfaces, the bearing surfaces are good. They're starting to flash rust now. But in here is clean. The back of here is clean. In here, where I couldn't get in with a wire brush, is clean. All this side, which was the top which was the rustiest piece that's gone black with magnetite this is black around here we'll have a better look once it gets dried off you can see better here how this bit which was the top has gone black the bit that's still got the original primer on it which hasn't gone rusty has stayed the primer color but the flash rust and take place here but that's just as it's drying out very pleased with that we'll give that a quick touch with the wire brush now and we'll give all these steel faces a rub with scotch pad and then put a bit of oil on them okay let's go for dinner So we took the final drive case up the farm, pressure washed it, just get it clean, make, it all, make sure all the rubbish was off. This is the number two, put it back in the bath, turn the electric on, let's have a look at it. Look, <coughs> look at the amount of rubbish that's come off that casing since it had a pressure wash, it's obviously removed grease and oil from the surface and has allowed 
more rust to be removed. So we'll switch that off in half an hour. You can see the ring here, the bolt and flange. That's obviously the back end. I'm going to switch that off in about an hour. I'm going to skim all that off. That is, is just rust. What you can do with it, skim it off. I put it in a box, put it outside in the air, let it dry. That can then just be tipped into the bin once it's dry. Underneath is just clean water and it can go down or drain. So there's no big waste disposal problems. Okay, let's go and get a bacon sandwich. Right, after three days in the electrolysis bath, pulled it out, dried it off, give it a um, quick wire brush knock all the scale off it let's have a look at it eh? there we go so it's still got a bit of rust dust on it because I haven't wiped it down yet but uh, give it a quick wire brushing well quick but now and a half get all the the vast majority of the stuff off it but I'm quite happy with that. What we've got to do now is get some uh, degreaser on it. Get it degreased, cleaned up, um, masked up. I was going to assemble it, both of them, and then paint it. But then I thought, where well, you've got things like the uh, dirt excluder on the final drive shaft, uh, and the clips, you're not going to get any paint, so it's going to end up rusting again eventually. So I'm back to this, paint everything at component level, put it together, and touch up the nuts and bolts. What do you th what's your thoughts on that, guys? As I see, I could assemble this, put it together, but like in here, where the final drive comes out, there's a dirt excluder that would cover parts of the drive shaft and parts of the components and parts of this the seal carrier for here now that wouldn't get painted and it would be raw steel and it would just end up rusting up again wouldn't it so let's know what you think six and two threes in it put it together paint it paint it in sections I suppose I could prime it, couldn't I? Put it to get prime it, build it, put a final coat on it. Right on my chair. Hmm? Put some worms down there this morning. Yes. Put your worms in there. somewhere just fill my belly there's me little in it that's such a lovely little song So as you can see, had a bit of a wire brush. It's come up pretty good. Started the surface rust from me messing on with it yesterday, putting a bit of heat into these holes to get the, the broken studs out. There was a broken stud in here, this one. We've drilled that out. We started poking down into them because we've been through every single one of these with a tap with the exception of this one. And that's because down in the bottom of here, is another broken stud that someone has tried to drill out and not made a very good job of it hasn't even found the center of the hole see there down the bottom of that it's all broken up so 
I've ordered 13 mil slot drill so it can go down there, cut that out at the bottom, drill it, heli coil it, a couple of heli coils into the hole, repair that thread. However, do you know when do you think life's just about to get easier for you? Look at this down in here, which is the that was a broken bolt in here. Cleaned that one out. This was the last one that I was going to do yesterday, and I thought I could just drill a hole through it and start the process. But look at it. That in the middle is a broken easy out. So look at that. That there. Tapped it with a centre punch. Absolutely rock solid. And you can imagine my heart sank. Now, see these ones here. These are five eighths. This is five eighths. But if you look at that hole there, you can see the outline here of the five eighths bolt. That's been like that a while. So whoever's been in there has been nowhere near the center. And realistically, this is a 5 eighths bolt. You've just sheared the head off. That in the center is the easy out. There is no way on earth you're going to pull a 5 eighths seized in bolt that you've just sheared the head off out with something like a 3 16 or a quarter easy out. It ain't going to happen, is it, guys? <clears throat> Now I had to go away and check the manual on this because if you look at here and this is round I was beginning to think is this half inch 5 eighths 5 eighths half inch so I went away and checked the manual and it's not this is 5 eighths but you can see here you can see the outer edge of that stud but it's been looks like it's been dressed up but we'll go what we're going to start and do we're going to go down through the middle We'll get through this easy out, find out what's there, and then we'll see what we've got left to come out of this lot. But you know, when you think your life's just about to take a nice easy turn, <laughs> it never does, does it? But anyway, we'll win. We will get that out of there, one way or another. It will come out. As long as we can get the easy out out of the middle, the rest of that material will come out of that hole. Well, guys. We're going to wrap it up there a bit. Because um, this is probably going to take two to three days to get through this again. Uh, I've got my carbide drills this time. I've got some nice new carbide burrs we're going to try out on this. Um, yes, we'll get there. Right, let's have a look at our little electrolysis unit. This here. Power pack of a computer that you just simply plug into mains that end. Mickey Mouse plug on that one, call him Mickey Mouse because he's got two ears like Mickey Mouse. Um, if you look at the diagram on the back there, when this has the little plug on the end, which this has not now got, it tells you that the positive is the internal connector of the plug, which makes sense because it's inside so it's safer. But that little diagram tells you that. Okay, it also tells you on the back of there, this is 250 volt, 1.5 amp output. Cut the plug off the end. You know your core cable is your positive, but you can test it with a little electrical multimeter just to verify. Uh, and all I did was solder some length of wire on, bit of heat shrink on it, solder the neutral to the screen, a little bit of heat shrink on it, a couple of little crocodile clips either end. Now this this has worked beautifully for me in the past with the exhaust manifold and it was the framework from the air filter system I also did at the same time with it. However, I think this is only 1.5 amps and I think it struggled a bit with the size of that casting. Um, there was still quite a bit rust on it 
but it had loosened it and it came off very quickly and cleanly with the with the wire brush. However, I went digging through me the back of my bedroom in there and I found two laptops. One I had Linux server on and one I had Linux Mint 18 or 19 or something on it, cinnamon. Um, so I got the power packs off then because I put the computers in the bin the other day. They're well past the date. I think I used them for practicing networking and stuff like that years ago. So I've got those two power packs. So I would try piggybacking them together to see if that would clean some bigger bits. Um, because I'll tell you what I have got there, I've got the discs just there off the middle of the wheels. I might try it with one of them. There were two or three power packs on it. I know you can use the old style car battery chargers. You know the ones where you used to fix the ampage? Not the ones with the automatic float and full levels, but was the ones that used to select the volt, the ampages and switch it on and it would charge at a set ampage its entire cycle. So, keep your eyes open for them, or you probably use um, what is it, like a bench power pack system. I've been trying to find one on eBay, but I cannot find one as yet, but I'll keep looking, and if they're not unduly expensive, we might buy ourselves one, mightn't we? Anyway, guys, we're going to end it there. So I'm going to crack on and get this last bolt out of here. Um, it's not going to win. Believe me, it's not going to win. As I say, I've ordered a half-inch UNC helicoil kit. Comes with a 13 mil drill. Um, I am going to... I've ordered two 13 mil slot drills for that other stud. We'll get them out. We'll get them fixed. We'll get it put back together, won't we? All right, thanks for visiting. As always, your time is greatly appreciated. Um, I know it's been a while since the last video, but we have been really busy up at the farm. Shooting off there in a couple of minutes, we'll get tidied up here. Shooting off there in a couple of minutes, we've got more sheep to shift, and we'll probably be starting to muck sheds out so we can get the floors cleaned and make things healthy and sanitized again. Eh? All right, guys. Well, as I say, if you found the video useful, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, tell your mates. Don't forget to tick the notification bell so you get told, you get a little message from YouTube the next time we release a video. Hopefully, you don't miss any. Some of you will have noticed, letterbox is shut. That's a different video coming out. Yes, never mind. So remember, don't overthink it. It's only nuts and bolts. See you in the next one. Bye now.